Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Uh, I got the valence on yesterday, and I'm trying to get this bumper fine-tuned. And um, if I measure right here, we're looking at about three quarters. And if I come over here, maybe about seven eighths. And then we got over here, we're sitting, bumper sitting quite a bit higher. And then if I come over here, almost a half inch in the center. So we're off at least a 16th, maybe a little bit more. And then uh, the other problem I had was these gaps, which I'm not concerned about these gaps as much as I am about the horizontal plane. So it's a little bit tighter in here, about a 16th of an inch. And um, it's a little bit looser over here. And the hole on the bracket doesn't quite line up. You can just kind of see it right there. So I may have to drill that hole out. Um, this is a repop bumper, repop bumper brackets and uh, original header. So anyway, I'm gonna try to split the difference and I put drill with a question mark here. I may wallow out the, uh, the front mount here. But uh, I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, I don't think the average person's gonna notice the difference. But I mean, you can tell. And then the other issue I have is I'm gonna try to line these corners up, the bumper and get the center, try to get the center closer to the parting line between the lower valence and the fender. And um, a lot of pictures I've seen of the older Camaros, that's just about never perfect. That's always off a little bit. And um, this one here is pretty close. It's not, not off by much. So we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit too. And like I said, these are all repop parts. So who knows how straight everything is and then bolted up to old parts. So anyway, that's the goal today is to get this bumper uh, mounted straight. Then I'm gonna get the grill in and get my headlight mounts in and that should be it for today. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna get busy on this thing and I'll let you know what I ended up doing. And I put tape on the bumper and which direction I need to go with things because I'm old and I forget shit. Okay, so this is the driver's side and we're at about three and 15 sixteenths. And here's the passenger side. Just a tiny bit shorter, pretty close to 15 sixteenths. Okay, so this is the driver's side and you can see that the horizontal plane of the bumper is pretty much lined up with the body line here. It's pretty darn close. And then uh, we'll go take a look at the passenger side. Okay, so this is the passenger side. And the bumper in the center looks like it's tilted up just ever so slightly, but if you look at it on the bottom, uh, kind of hard to tell by the camera angle, but about as close as it's gonna get. I'm not gonna put the, uh, the center bumper guards on. I just think the car looks cleaner without them. So this is how it's gonna look. Anyway, when you're standing up here, you really can't tell that it's even a 32nd or maybe a 16th off. It's, a, it's as straight as it's gonna go. Okay, so I double checked all my nuts and bolts in here and I was getting ready to put the grill in. So I pulled the bumper off one last time. It's gonna get the grill installed and what we found out was these OEM 
plastic snap-in nuts do not fit on the repop. You can just see they just, they don't snap in. Now they do fit on the OEM. This is the OEM header and they fit in that slot just right. So on these repops, they made these holes too big. So then I was gonna try to maybe modify these uh, nylon washers to snap in behind them because there's enough room to fit over the, uh, the detents. But I think I'm just gonna try to go out and find the uh, either some nuts or some J-clips that'll fit in this repopped oversized hole. So anyway, it's like everything. Nothing goes the way you think it's gonna go on this repop stuff. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Um, once I find the, the correct hardware, we'll get the grill in and the bumper back on. Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out. All right, Pete, North Las Vegas again. Hey, this is a different day from the beginning of the video. But uh, anyway, I got the headlight uh, mounting brackets in and I had to wallow these holes out a little bit here. These are repops, so I didn't feel too bad about that. Um, I still have the passenger side original, but the driver side was bent up from a, a car wreck. But I just, I put in both repops. So anyway, we got these in, not too much trouble. Um, as I was saying in the earlier clips, I got this bumper within probably less than a sixteenth of an inch in this direction and uh, on both sides. And I got the grill in, um, the top mounting holes all lined up very well with the original header. I had to make some adjustments. Don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but you can see where I had to wall that, that mounting hole out a little bit on the grill to get it started. But anyway, we got it in. It's, it's kind of tight. It's, it's hitting the bottom of the valence. And uh, the parking lights, oh my, I spent probably a couple hours on these. Um, adjusting the mounting tabs on the, on the valence, on the repop valence. But I finally managed to get them in and they're tight. I mean, up here in the corners and up against the sides. So when I get this car out for paint and body, what I'll probably have them do is uh, take a cutting wheel and, and cut this. And then by the time they weld that back up, it should be just enough gap to be perfect. So, um, this one here was even tighter. Um, it's actually, I had to push in pretty hard to get past the, the valence, but I mean, it's, it's in. And, uh, so what we're going to do today is, uh, we're going to install the, the, uh, headlights. And all I have is the mounting ring and the actual headlight bucket. And I do have all the mounting hardware. I don't have the, uh, the trim pieces. For some reason, I thought I already had those, but I had to order a, a couple of those last night. But we'll get, uh, we'll get the headlights installed anyway. And then uh, last thing I want to say was on this bumper mounting, I didn't have to drill holes in any of the mounting brackets. Um, I just said to myself, you know, what would the guy on the assembly line back in uh, the 70s do? And I decided that this is what they would do back then. They didn't have time to mess around with uh, fine-tuning these things. They just banged them together. And it all seemed to work out. Like I said, it was mainly this, uh, the main support bracket that had to be tweaked um, off of the uh, radiator support. And um, I had to bring this side down. No, this side went up, and that side had to go down. And then uh, when I made those adjustments, the holes didn't quite line up and I had to uh, tweak the brackets one way or the other. But anyway, long story short, it took four hours to get this bumper on straight. And then um, like I was saying in the earlier clips, I got the, the side of the bumpers pretty well lined up with the parting line and the other side looks just as good. So it's on as straight as I'm gonna get it. Um, the other thing is, um, these cars originally came with what they call bumper guards and they would bolt down here and go up to uh, through that hole on the bottom of the bumper. And uh, I'm just, I'm not going to put those on. I think the car looks cleaner with this one piece bumper without them. 
Uh, if it turns into a support issue, I mean, that seems pretty strong. I'm not worried about it going anywhere. So I don't think they have to be there. I think it's more of a, maybe kind of a cosmetic thing. I don't know. Maybe GM put them on there to pass a, a five mile an hour bumper, bumper tap. But anyway, um, I went through all these manuals here and could not find anywhere exactly how these buckets went together. But uh, the assembly manual did have a pretty good breakdown. Shows the upper part of the hook facing up and the straight slot of the spring going into this, uh, this section right here. And there's the springs and you can see one side has a hook and the other side is just a straight straight piece that fits in that slot. But anyway, the assembly manual was the only place I could find. It actually showed how all this went together. So we'll get that done and then uh, take another short video clip and front end's gonna be as done as I can get it um, until I get the, the actual trim pieces to the outer trim piece. Okay, I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining things in the, the last clip, so I dug out my old one. And this is the passenger side. And you can see how that spring, you can see how the hook faces up. And then you can see how the, uh, the tab comes through the bracket. And you can see how this ring holds the headlight to the bucket with these screws here. And uh, the OER uh, Repop did come with some new screws. And this one here had quite a bit of adjustment. Um, you see the plastic nuts here, the adjuster with the little slot that fits into the, the bucket slots. So anyway, that is how it goes. So we're gonna get all this stuff put together. And in the last video clip, we'll just show what it looks like without the outer trim rings. Okay, so these plastic nuts on the, uh, the Repop are pretty tight. So I tried getting them in with my fingers and just push them in, but um, what I'm gonna have to do is uh, stick this screwdriver in here and then tap the back of the screwdriver with a mallet once I get them lined up and then uh, kind of show you here what I'm getting ready to do. Okay, the other thing doing it this way helps is uh, about the second or third time you drop that plastic nut underneath your battery tray because you didn't think to put these nuts on before you put the bucket in and now you don't want to take your bucket all apart and take it out to just put the nuts in. Um, you can see the screwdriver kind of poking through. And then, uh, like I said, I'm just going to come in here with a mallet and, and tap it in. Okay, so for the top one, because of where it was at, I had to use a mallet to tap it in. And the bottom one, I was able to just to line up with the screwdriver and get it lined up in a hole. And then I just was able to uh, push on a screwdriver with my hand and it, it popped right in. So that plan went well. Okay, so on this old uh, 71, you can see the little nubs sticking out here. Those face up and then there's one nub that goes down. Um, this is how the bucket's gonna go on the car. And the spring with the hook facing op opening up is gonna fit through this slot here. And then the spring will fit in this hole right here on the, on the bracket. And then these are just your adjusting screws. And sorry about the camera work. And you can see how they have slots on the head. And that's that's where these fit. So anyway, um, I think the next clip will just show them installed because there's really not much left to talk about. Okay, so one last tip on getting these in. The easiest way for me to get them in, I'm sure everybody's gonna have a different way of doing it, but was to get the screws started and get them slid into the channels uh, get your spring in first and um, like I said the spring 
that little tab on the back faces down and inboard. And then that puts your hook on, on the top. So for, for me, it was easier to get these screws started first, get the spring in, and I'm gonna come here with some, uh, some uh, needle nose and pull that spring into the slot. And I tried it a couple different ways and this seems to have been the easiest way for me to do it. Other than putting all this together maybe before I put the bracket in the car. But maybe I wouldn't have had room to get the bracket in if I had the bucket on. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, one last thing to watch out for. This notch here, um, whoever changed this headlight out back in the day, they didn't put the trim ring back on correctly. That notch should have went down here to fit around the spring. And you can see how this is kind of bent out a little bit. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. So whoever did this trim ring and changed this headlight back in the day didn't quite know what they're doing. The uh, replacement trim ring uh, just has a notch where it fits over the the spring section so it doesn't have a complete cutout. But anyway, that's why this is here. Okay, so I keep thinking I'm done with these clips and I'm gonna show you what the headlights look like once they're installed. Um, these are the chrome screws that came with the, uh, the OEM trim ring. And I could not get them started in the hole. I mean, they're sharp and everything, but they just, they wouldn't cut into the hole. So what I ended up having to do was use some self-tapping screws. And these are eight by half inch. And these have a little drill head on them. Focus. And that's how I got the thread started in the, uh, the bucket. And I just test fit one of these. It's a nice snug fit. So the thread pitch is the same. So anyway, just when I think I'm done. Okay, so they're in there. Um, once again, I seriously underestimated how much time it was going to take to do something on this car. I, I thought it would take me 10 or 15 minutes to, to pop these headlights in. And uh, no, not for me anyway. So one last thing I wanted to mention was on the uh, retaining ring for the headlights, you can see this screw's here and that screw is there. So they're not too hard to get to, but the bottom one on this driver's side, you can see they put right underneath the bottom and it is damn near impossible to get to that thing. But anyway, um, on this side here, for some reason, they put the uh, mounting ring screw here and down here where you can get to it and over here where you can get to it. It's, it's not on the bottom. So why, why they ended up doing that on the driver's side, I have no idea, but man, it is really hard to get to. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it for today. Today's Sunday, so I'm not gonna, not gonna work too hard. Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.